Hi. Two days ago, I caught those up, uh, caught, picked up those sea cucumbers or tree pang from the beach, and I had decided that I would try to eat them. All the googling I did could not find anything about um, like personal catch about them. So uh, there was some information about how there's six commercial licenses and they're already like allocated but four of them are in use I don't know exactly what that means but and I read something about them being underfished anyway which I would believe because there's heaps out there um, so I rang fisheries this morning before making my I'm going to eat tree pain video and um, they're going to call me back because they have no idea if I'm allowed to take them what it like species and um, if it's edible. So I rang just now the Museum and Art Gallery of the Northern Territory and they have an expert. So I'm going to visit the expert, find out the species uh, edibility, edibility. He probably won't know like the fishing rules, but at least I'll know if I won't die. So I'm really excited to talk to an expert. Um, yeah, we'll be there in just a few minutes. I just did all that without recording. Okay, so we're at the Museum and Art Gallery of the Northern Territory, ready to talk to our expert. And I just, had, while we wait for him, I just got off the phone from Northern Territory Fisheries. They got back to me. A guy called uh, Brian knows what he's talking about. And he tells me it's probably a red sandfish and uh, edible with a process to cleaning it. But I've seen some YouTube, so I think I'll be okay there and um, the quotas go alongside like the same it's counted as the mollusk quota which is um, 10 litres in shell of course it doesn't have a shell but um, yeah I'd never take 10 litres of anything I'd only eat like take what I can eat on the day or plan to eat like the next day or whatever I would it doesn't make sense to take more than that to me um, yeah so Waiting for the expert. We'll see if there's any more information to learn. So that was interesting. Apparently this creature is, I'll just start the car so that the air conditioner turns on. Not going anywhere. Okay. Can you put it on Apparently this creature is, there you go, it's gonna be freezing. Apparently this creature is poisonous. It um, has something in its skin. A sea cucumber Darwin Harbour is Holotheria atra, which has poison in its um, skin. Or it could, which is also called lolly fish. If you know that you can eat lolly fish, let me know. Um, or Holotheria leucospelota. Um, or um, Google says it's also called black tarzan which is the one that like spits out the sticky stuff when it's threatened which what? I think I kind of think it might be that one either way uh, this guy says don't eat it danger danger we did talk about periwinkles or what was the other name he called it Anyway, the other periwinkles here are cool to eat, but they were never found in indigenous middens. Um, but the big black, black, what do they call it? Anyway, there was a big black shell that is. Um, interestingly. Now I don't know what to do. This guy suggests that I go to the Emporium and purchase some dried sea cucumber and try cooking that. I know it's expensive. Maybe we'll have a look. I'm in the Chinese Emporium. Uh, sorry, Northern, Ter Northern Territory Oriental Emporium. And um, I've just asked to see some sea cucumber. So he's gone across the road to another warehouse. But apparently it's like $300 a kilo. And I told him I'm, I'm probably not gonna buy it. I'll just have a look and show you. But, uh, interesting, huh?
Hey Ocean. Yeah. Guess how much per kilo sea cucumber is at the Northern Territory, I don't know, what's it called? The NT Oriental Emporium. I don't know. $550 a kilo. And the guy, so a really good guy, um, had to cross the road to get it. And it was, um, he showed me two. And one of them, just for one sea cucumber, $155. And it was like this big. They say that sea cucumber has some properties that might be worth that much. So, as it was suggested to me, we're getting ooh, some fresh water to see if these guys aren't dead. Seems like the tide's still going out. Mm. I'm going to flip this camera around, but I reckon. Uh, there is white stringy stuff in here. Let's have a look. A bit of stuff. Let's see if we can get light in there. The side of one that all but erupted. Oh yeah, there it goes. See that? Oh, oh, crap, crap. No, good. Did you not see that? There's the boys. And my girl. Maybe that's um, some damage from the fridge. Little bumps. Seems like this part would be the bottom. This one is a good one. Belly. And here's the sticky, sticky stringy stuff. If you have a look at Heston, Heston experiments with sea cucumber, it's the same thing. Right? This is a defensive mechanism that they spit out to um, for creatures. And it might like entangle the creature and then the sea cucumber can get away. It's a shame that guts fill out, but I have a feeling that if it's not dead, it might self heal. Let's see. This one. Are you starting to become happy or not? Let's go in the shade and see if the colour is any better. It looks really dark in the shade, but it's not black. Dark brownish. Like a... Not sure how it's 
describe it. Soft little bumps. Oh, there you can see the colour. Anyway, I've got these two little periwinkles. They're different types. The guy at the museum did tell me, can't remember. Any info. But I reckon they'll come back to life. Should I eat this? Or continue my research? I'm going to put this in the sea. It's either dead, going to be dead, or, um, you know. This one, I think, it is alive, so I'll just get some more fresh water so I can show the children. Not a the crab, they're just running around here. I think these little rock crabs count as in the mollusks. I don't think they have a size because it's not a mud crab. There's a crab in the rock.